Mr. President, we gather here as members of a global family, not pursuing narrow national interests. The future is not distant. It is here. And the choices we make here will determine the fate of generations to come. Our theme, multilateral solutions for a better tomorrow, reminds us that no nation, however powerful, can resolve today's challenges alone. The climate crisis, inequality, pandemics, terrorism, and violent extremism, these are not local problems. They are global and demand global solutions. We live in an era of division. Too often, we allow lines of wealth, geography, or ideology to define our responses to global challenges. In doing so, we forget that standing apart leads to failure, while standing together ensures progress. The pandemic showed us how interconnected we are it revealed that no nation can shield itself from a world in disarray. Yet, in its aftermath, we have seen irrational isolationism and blind nationalism research. This, my friends, is a path that leads to failure. We must return to the founding principles of the United Nations, cooperation, solidarity, and shared commitment to peace which underline the UN 2030 Sustainable Development Goals, whose fulfillment presents humanity with its most progressive charter. At the heart of today's crisis is the climate emergency, which threatens humanity's very existence. Africa, whilst contributing the least to global emissions, bears the heaviest burden. From floods to desertification, we're already experiencing its devastating effects. Despite the promises, the vulnerable remain abandoned. We're told to adapt and be resilient. But how does one adapt to famine or build resilience when farmers cannot predict the seasons? Africa cannot continue to pay for a crisis she did not create. We demand fairness, not charity. Climate justice requires an economic system that works for everyone, not just the privileged few. Mr. President, the vast gulf between rich and poor should be a sustain, a stain on our collective conscience. Over 700 million people, that is 8.57% of the world's population, still live in extreme poverty, deprived of basic human rights, education, food, healthcare, housing, and the dignity of work. The pandemic exacerbated this equality, pushing millions more into poverty, whilst the wealth of the richest soared. This is unsustainable, and it is immoral. We must build a new global economic order, one that promotes inclusivity and equity for all. The multilateral system, especially the United Nations, should be at the forefront of this effort. This leads me to a critical issue, the reform of the United Nations Security Council, the body charged with the maintenance of international peace and security. In its current form, the Council does not reflect the realities of today's world. It remains an outdated post-Second World War relic, with Africa, a continent of 1.4 billion people, grossly underrepresented. We cannot speak of multilateralism when the structures of global comfort governance are rooted in an unjust and unequal order. Mr. President, the time for half measures is over. Bold reforms are needed to ensure that every nation, large or small, rich or poor, has an equal voice at the table. Only then can we achieve a fair and inclusive system of governance. History will judge us, not by our words, but by our actions. The world is watching. The future is watching. We cannot be the generation that stood by as the world burned, whilst inequality widened and promises of justice went unfulfilled. That is why Ghana supports fully the, the global pact of the, the, of, of the future and its supporting documents. I thank you for your attention.